Getting it real with Wong Chun Wai on the hottest topics, frank, engaging, and candid. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Francis Ip needs no introduction. The iconic singer is known for many theme songs for television series produced by TVB in the 1980s and 1990s, including the hit song "Shanghai Beach" or "Xiong Hoi Tan." But she's back with a new single. Let's hear more of it from Francis herself. Please welcome Francis Ip. Hello, good Hi. morning, Malaysia, and followers from around the world. <laughs> Today we have a very special guest. It's the legend herself, Francis Z. Ah, uh, thank you. Welcome, thank you. the iconic legend. Oh. <laughs> Not iconic at all. Just me. it is to me. It Hello is to me. me and many others. You have surprised many of us, including myself, with your new single. Mm. Uh, it's called "Love in My Memory." Mm. Um, Cantonese. I think it's been quite a while since you released a single. Can you share uh, with us what it's all about and why this new single out of the blue? Okay, well, I'm very, very fortunate and very blessed because uh, during the lockdown in the pandemic, I thought uh, my recording contract would probably fizzle out because it's got maybe another 18 months or so to go. And I thought, I can't do any work and they're not doing anything. Okay. So perhaps they'll just quietly forget it. But then, no, um, <laughs> Wow Music, my label, came back to me and said, we want to extend it for three years. I said, what? Do you know how old I am? <laughs> they said, Age is not a problem. You know, we want to work with you. So I said, OK. Um, they were very pleased with the CD that we released in, uh, that was when I was 68. So it was quite a few years ago. And the response was really good. So they're very happy to carry on. Um, and so having extended the contract, they started looking around and in the lockdown, in fact, in last year, um, uh, wow music has, um, sort of moved into Southeast Asia. They're now in Indonesia and also in the Philippines mm -hmm. and they've come across a young, uh, Indonesian songwriter, very young, only about 17 years old, little young girl, um, called Komatra. And she has this song called Silence, which was uh, released in November, I think end of November, early December. And it had a huge following. It's like 1.7 million people subscribed to it. And it's a song about her. Um, the, the footage is about her being in parties. And she said, there's so much stuff in my head, in my heart, but no one is listening. Nobody can can you know talk I can't talk to to anybody about my feelings and so it it's very evocative for the young people because they felt they're being ignored you know through all of this they can't communicate with the older people or each other during the pandemic so it's a very dark song but it became immensely popular and I like the melody very much it's got a very haunting melody so I said to Caroline maybe we can do something in Chinese so um, early, I think it was in October, the government in Hong Kong announced this scheme called Microfilm um, Film and Music to encourage young filmmakers who are like, uh, they may be uh, commercial, uh, you know, making commercials or uh, a small outfit with no big budgets. Mm -hmm. if, they, uh, if they put up a script and sub you know, enter this competition. And if they're selected, um, I think there were over a hundred of these entrants. And out of them, I think in the end, they selected 32. And the government would give you, I think, $150,000 basically to make this eight minute long movie. And obviously um, it's about music. So it has to have a song. And then, uh, Caroline, my my record label lady, said to me, um, we'll use this song. We'll we'll call it something appropriate because the people in Hong Kong, the young people in Hong Kong feel very misunderstood. So the song is actually about um, having lived through hard times, even though the pain is difficult. 
you should accept it and then move on and then live the best you can and, you know, treasure every day. This is basically what the message is. Mm -hmm. So I completely turned the song around from Kamatra and um, we did a really very emotional and dramatic arrangement. The movie, eight minute movie long, I, I'm one of the actors um, because of the time restriction can only feature half the song, but it is a very evocative half. The movie is called Unfinished Business because I am a lady who runs an office to help people with their unfinished business. And unfinished business are bad memories. So in my own life, I have lost a daughter to illness and I was so painful. I went to a professor and he cleaned my memory for me, erased it. So I learned how to do that. And then I run this office to help people erase their memories. So one young man comes to meet me and asks me to erase the memory. So I said, oh, who is this memory you want to erase? This oh, it's a girlfriend I love, but she's disappeared and I can't find her. So can I see what she looks like? And it's my daughter. Mm. And of course, my memory having been cleared, it didn't click immediately. So I kind of have a subconscious understanding. Of, oh, that looks familiar, you know. And then I take him into a dream and I watch the two of them. And then I suddenly realize who this girl is. And all the memory came rushing back. And then at the end, the girl, this is in a dream. The girl said, I have to go now. And said to us, will you, will you always remember how happy we were? And I promised her that we would never forget. So when the boy wakes up and said, did I dream? Was that, you know, was that real? So I said, well, whether it's real or it's a dream, I think she wants us to carry on living the best we can and treasure her memory. So that is the message. Because I think it is true, we go through some hardships Yep. And memories are difficult to erase. You can't choose them, you know. Every now and again, they come back in a dream or something. Yeah. But you've got to face it and be positive about what you can do tomorrow and make your life much more fulfilling. So that's, you know, the, the grandma <laughs> message I'm trying to put across. <laughs> but the song so the, is beautiful. So in the modern social media language, everything was deleted? Yes. yes. <laughs> now, uh, the original song... And the one that you have uh, added on to the new angle, the mm. original song was it was it more on hardship and the romantic oh, it was, a, it was, was a added very, in for very, the Cantonese version. Yeah, it's a very depressing song when I yeah. it, and the whole music video is also very dark. Um, she's she's sitting in a party, but no one is talking to her. She's stuck mm. in the the mud and she's mm. drowning, and nobody knows, you know. But it it really evoked a lot of. Uh, feelings among the young so okay. she has a huge huge following she's she's a new artist this is okay. maybe the first or the second that she's released but it just had a huge I mean she's very pretty um so I'm hoping that with new material that she writes maybe there's something else we can use as well because she is very talented in that way yeah mm -hmm. but mine is the exact opposite I've sort of started the song very sadly and then with a very uplifting positive message in the second half <laughs> um what has been the reaction of your fans okay uh, for those people um who are much older who grew up in the 80s and 90s with your up tempo TV beast team songs what has been their reaction I think they like the songs. Um, I send them to all my friends of my age right mm -hmm. and uh, they all say oh, Actually, one I had one friend who uh, who wrote to me and said this song uh, and the the film itself. He he looked at the film and he said to me, it reminded me of my my late wife. How unconditional her love was for me. So I think it. A lot of my ladies' friends said it was very moving. So I hope, you know. Younger people might get the idea, but I don't actually know how well it's done. I mean, it's on; it's available on Spotify, on Apple Music, mm -hmm. on you know all the platforms. Yeah. But I don't actually know how well it's done. Um, yeah. But what I hope to do is to send a positive message to the younger people. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, would you say that your new single uh, is aiming at the younger audience? 
Because it's available on Spotify. Yes, I I hope to. Because basically, when I talk younger people, I'm not only talking about teenagers, but I'm talking about those in mid thirties. You know, I mean, yeah. it hadn't been easy the last few years for them. Yeah. Um, so I hope it will give them some encouragement too. Yeah. So how does the arrangement uh, with your new contract, now that you have released a new single, uh, are you expected to release more singles as a follow-up as part of the contract? Well, we already have uh, in the last, actually during lockdown, we did a couple more and mm -hmm. they also went out as singles like that um, on, on other you know different platforms digitally. Mm -hmm. So by the time we get, maybe uh, eight or ten we can then have a cd so we're working on that at the moment yeah and, and all these will be uh cantonese songs most of them i think there is one one mandarin one but, but i like the melody very much i like it in cantonese yeah mm -hmm. so when would we expect a complete <laughs> new album from you i'm really looking forward to the album ready <laughs> because, well... because because this old man here is still trying to understand uh, this new uh, single, Love in My Memory. I'm like stuck in the uh, 80s, okay? Where I want more of my, more of the Francis Steve that I know. With okay. Boy <laughs> well, I can send you, I can send you the link to Spotify and you mm -hmm. can have a listen to it and then tell me what you think. Um, the, we're working on the songs, but as you know, at my age, finding the right song is actually very difficult. Yes. I'm very blessed that I have a very good producer, Michael Ao. Uh, he has been working with uh, Jackie Chung for many, many years. And about, I'd say, 15 years ago, he he retired. He uh, went to work in Beijing and then worked for 10 years in Beijing and decided to come back. So my record company was able to persuade him to come out of retirement to work with me. So the first CD we did was um, a collection, like six of my most popular theme songs recorded it with the original arrangement, but with a bigger band and modern technology to make it much fuller and also uh, an audio file uh, record and a few new songs into it. So now we've got, I think we've already got about six, so we need another four. But we do it slowly because we think it's worthwhile um, to do to make a product that is with a lot of effort, a lot of thought into it. Because, you know, I'm not a pop idol, so I don't need a new single every six months or so. So it can be, you know, we're, we're now working on... Um, with this new song, at the moment, we don't have a music video because the, the film was only eight minutes and it only featured half a song. So we are hoping to cut from the existing footage a music video that we can launch on YouTube to, to help push it as well. Mm. When was your last uh, album that was released? Uh, that would have been 68 uh so oh, it would have been i'm 75 now so it would be, it was seven seven year eight, eight years ago yeah okay yeah. Mm, yeah what was the reaction of your family i mean you told them look oh, my contract hasn't ended and i'm required <laughs> to produce more more about okay. and we have we have had the francis in our home for two years and now oops <laughs> she may be living with us in... well i've been on the go every month um they they've been very supportive and in fact they were as, as um, amazed as i i was that oh wow <laughs> you're still recording at 75 you know um but to be truthful um i enjoy the process of the recording i i like being in the studio with michael and we can both be very creative with you know i can give him several versions of the song of the verses of how much feeling to put in here and there. And I contribute and it's very satisfying with the end result. And he is, he and I tune in really well. Um, he's, he's a good 15 years younger than me, but he's, um, he's used to working with uh, not pop artists, but mature artists. He understands the way we think. So it's good. Mm. It's a good relationship. I, I was watching YouTube uh, and there are, yeah, this is a clip that shows you performing in Hat Jai. Is it a new uh, concert or Very a new. new one? Yeah, it went uh, viral. It, it's gone viral, I know. Yeah. What happened yeah. was I was approached um, late last year if I could go to Hat Jai uh, over mm -hmm. Chinese New Year 
Hajai wanted to announce to the world their reopening for business. Okay. So they said, if you could do a concert for us as part of the Chinese New Year celebration, we will then live stream a segment of the mm. of the concert. What I didn't realize was they put the whole concert up there, including all <laughs> the speeches in the front. <laughs> mm. <laughs> but I have to say, I've never been to Hajai. Um, it is a uh, it is a lovely place in the sense that yeah. the people are very warm. Um, they are the most traditional Chinese that I have met yeah. anywhere. They came to the concert. Now they built this stage in the middle of Chinatown. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm undercover, but no one else is, right? <laughs> and it's in all the VIPs came, and they all they were all wearing black, uh, red, and gold. You know, some mm -hmm. of them have dragons and phoenixes on them, complete with the gold ornaments. Mm -hmm. So it's it's really you look down and and it's a sea of red, and it's mm -hmm. and then they have these um, lion dances, and you know, very very traditional Chinese, but well done. And the mm. people are very hospitable. Um, yes. They took me, took David and I to eat wonderful Thai food because, you know, I mean, we don't know much about Thai food <laughs> apart from Tom Yum Kong and, <laughs> you know, Pad Thai and, you know, Pad Si Yu. Mm. You know, all, we're sort of very limited. But mm. they took us to some really, really good uh, restaurants and tasted um, wonderful cooking. Um, yes. And then they bring their family to meet us as well, which I thought was very touching because usually um, they kind of meet you on a professional basis and then they're very shy, but they're, mm. they're lovely. They're really, really very hospitable. So we had a great time. Um, I took the band from Malaysia, my mm. musical director, Ko Fuk Sing, uh, mm. and the whole band and the chorus from KL. So it wasn't too too hard a job for me and it was very enjoyable the only problem I had was when I saw this how you know uh, before the concert I had to go and take pictures with them and I said yeah. oh my goodness everybody's in red so I thought oh if I turn up in my red dress as well <laughs> on stage I would melt into the background you know <laughs> so luckily I had something in pastel and mm. I wore uh, an apple green dress so in the end I didn't wear red but they did yeah. uh, everybody did it was Quite amazing. I, I come from Penang. Uh, this is just a three oh, hours yeah. drive. Three hours drive to Hajai on road. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't I realize there, there were so many Chinese there. Um, yes. The the ones that we met were there three or fourth generation. They've been there. Um, they're Hakka, they're uh, Kyu Chao, Hokkien, uh, Cantonese. So it's a mixture of all the languages, but they speak Mandarin. So that was all right. So all of us in Malaysia are now saying, she was so close to us, okay, and yet so far. She was in Hajai. So when is Francis coming to Kuala Lumpur, to Genting? Very soon. Um, yes! <laughs> March 15th. I have a concert. Wow, that's great! Okay. My You'll solo be... concert. My solo. Where will it be? 15th of March, up in the Arena of Stars. Wonderful, wonderful. Yes. I will go there. Mm. Can't wait. <laughs> So apart from Hajai, where have you been performing or where have you been traveling? Well, uh, since June last year, I went to California in August. I worked in two of the casinos, one in Southern California, one in mm. Northern California. And it was the first time going back to work after more than two years. I was very nervous. And I was working with uh, Elisa, Elisa Chan and Alice Lau. So the three women mm. worked together. And in the second, uh, I think it was the second casino in Sacramento, a place called Thunder Valley. And they had a, an open air arena that seats about 5,000. And in the summer, they always have open air concerts there because the days are quite long and it's not hot. So when I looked at that place, I thought, oh, I panicked. I thought, my goodness, 5,000 seats. And I look at, you know, this big arena and then there's all the seats all the way up the hill, right? Mm -hmm. I said to the promoter, wow, how are you going to fill this? Said, oh, don't worry. We're not opening the bleachers, you know, all the bits that go up because your audiences are too old. They won't be able to make <laughs> <the> steps. <laughs> and it was true. They came, quite a few of them in wheelchairs and they were accompanied, yeah, by their younger relatives but i tell you they can sing, yeah. they sing every song every song 
I sang, they joined in. It was very moving. It was really wonderful. Mm, that's really very great. Uh, but have you been also doing the uh, the traveling on holiday beside the professional gigs? No. Um, England, mm -hmm. we had three months in England and that was it, but I didn't work. It was purely a trip to visit family and friends. Um, and then after we came back, I went back to Hong Kong for six weeks and that's non-stop eating for six weeks. Because <laughs> I haven't seen so many friends. Every night we were eating somewhere. And also the the restriction uh, was reduced. By the time I got back, it was only you, you have to stay home for three days and then do mm. two tests. So it's quite easy to cope. The only thing I couldn't get used to was since February last year in Australia, we already don't wear any masks. Yes, yes. So when I got back to Hong Kong, it is still mandatory. If you don't wear one, you get fined $5,000. So every mm. time I go out, I come down and concierge downstairs will say, oh, you still daily more how <laughs> <laughs> So I have to go back upstairs and get a mask and come down again you know yeah. so after a while he just said oh, bigger how jolly <laughs> <laughs> because i keep forgetting but if i had gone out on the street and i had been seen by a policeman i would have to mm. pay five thousand oh. fine. yeah it's still valid until the 8th of march it was announced this morning oh, okay yeah. i find very uh, discomforting i hate wearing masks <laughs> unfortunately it's necessary especially you know, my age, although I have been vaccinated, I think yeah. we need to protect ourselves. And mm -hmm. apart from, you know, keeping yourself fit and all that, you you really got to take the extra precautions. So when I fly, I don't actually wear a mask all the time. But when I bought the airplane, if I know yes. I have a queue for any reason in the air bridge, then I wear one. But Same. fortunately, because I'm traveling in the front, I don't usually have to wait yes. very long. <laughs> I can board first. So that was all right. <laughs> okay, coming back to the microfilm. Um, so where was this microfilm uh, film? Where was it done? In Hong Kong. It's okay. done by um, a young, um, a, his name is Jonathan C. A very young, um, I could tell you how young he is. Sometimes when you speak to him, his lingo is quite different. He'll say, oh, I haven't loaded that in my brain yet. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't talk like that, you know. So then I have to say, oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, yes. Uh, what I mean is, I say, well, can, have you thought about this? You know, so um, it's it's good. And it's lovely to work with young talent. Yes. In the sense that there were two um Four other actors, but two of them had a major role. One is my daughter and one is the young man who comes in. And then there are other incidental, uh, two other actors. And these are young people from drama school, right? And the director will say, I, would, I want you to fight, improvise a fight. And they do. And each take they do is a different topic. Oh. So it's very impressive. You know, they can just open their mouth and have a fight. You know, oh. one blaming the woman, the other one is blaming the man. You know, every time they have a fight, it's a different thing. It's, mm. it's fantastic, different action, different feelings. Oh. And so working with these two young actors, I learned a great deal of their movements. Because it's a film, it's not. Yeah. Um, yeah. The movements are slower, more subtle, not a stage play. So mm -hmm. I learned all of that. And if they pass me, if they gave me gave me the emotion, I can actually give some back, which was mm. something I learned. And when I was making films in 1980, 84, I, I just, I didn't know anything about acting. And I found it amazing that if you change a camera angle, you're waiting two hours for something to mm. happen, you know, and then your emotions are on tap. They say, and then you have to go. Whereas here, working with them, because we are filming in a smaller studio and everything is a lot more under control, mm -hmm. um, we can actually act through it. They've got three cameras taking it. We can act through a whole scene and then we can repeat it and then they can take, you know, cuts from it. So it's a good learning curve for me. And although I have to admit, sometimes I feel a little bit working out of my comfort zone. Uh, in the sense that they work very long hours. But my record label is very protective. Every time it comes to nine o'clock, they say to the director, Jonathan, Frances needs to go home. She has to sleep. <laughs> it must have been really a long time for you to step into this role of acting again, right? Very um, long time. 
you did you take a bit of time to get used to this dialogue, um, the shooting and everything? I we had a, a rehearsal day, mm -hmm. so um, I was very familiar with the script. But then you know, yeah. scripts change every day, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, on the first day, I was a bit nervous, but I gradually got into it, and I I I actually did quite well, according to the director. Maybe he was being polite. <laughs> I, I think that your fans uh, would have to get used to seeing this uh, microfilm with, with Francis Sheep with the entirely grey hair. Yes, yes. That was uh, the thing that hit me the most. <laughs> well, the last time I saw you, my hair was half grey. Yes. The beginning <laughs> of the black. lockdown. Yeah, it was half grey. So I put a wig on to cover it up. Oh, okay. because yeah. During lockdown, I couldn't go to the hairdressers. And then I thought, no. Why don't I just grow it out and see what it looks like? So when the time, it took about seven months. And when it grew, you know, grew out and I eventually I went to the hairdressers. She said, oh, you've got low lights and highlights. Don't do anything to it. People pay a lot of money to get that effect. You just keep your hair where <laughs> it is. So I was still not sure about working because on the posters, it's all hair with dark color, right? <laughs> yeah. with gray people might say, oh, that's not her, you know? So when I went to California, I still put a wig on. I worked with a full wig. But then by the time I got to Singapore in September last year, I did two mm -hmm. shows at the Marina Bay Sands. Okay. Um, during the rehearsal, I was looking at the, the closed circuit TV on the LED and I said, that doesn't look too bad. I said to my husband, who has been thinking exactly the same thing? I said, should I bother with the wig? Say, no, don't bother with the wig. So that night or that afternoon, I appeared as I am. And I got so many really good comments. And there was even a one young girl who sent me a message to say, you look like Elsa from Frozen. <laughs> <laughs> That's the really, really, really told me <laughs> because she had white hair and I happened to be wearing a turquoise lacy dress that day. So she said, you look like Elsa from Frozen. <laughs> that was really cute. Yeah. Okay, Francis, thank you for joining us tonight. I'm really looking forward to your show in Genting Highlands and I'll be helping to promote your microfilm. I think it's a great song and okay. I hope more Malaysians and followers from around the world will catch this microfilm, the song, and of course, more of Francis Deep in the future. Thank you, Francis, for joining us. And of right. course, uh, please follow, like, and share and do subscribe to Francis and myself on social media. Thank you. Thank Goodbye. you. Take thank care. You. Bye.